now that I understand classful boundaries a bit better, anytime I'm given an address, for instance, 134.68.70.10, I always want to identify what class I'm in. In this case, since the first octet is in 134, I would be in a class B network. So as we mentioned before, the subnet mask for a class B address is 255.255.0.0. .255 .0 .0. That's the default mask. Class A is 255.0.0.0. Class C is 255.255.255.0. We can't do anything with the mask beyond that boundary, meaning we can't change the mask within the network portion of the address. We can only work within the host portion of the address. In our class discussion, you are given the address of 192.168.2.37 with a slash 27. The slash 27 is telling us that out of a 32-bit address, the first 27 bits will have a mask applied to them. Now remember, the first thing that we wanted to do was to determine what our classful boundary was. We know that with a 192 address, we have a class C address. Doesn't matter in this example that it's a private IP address. We're not concerned about the routing function. We just want to identify what class the address is in. So you are asked, what is the class for the host address? What is the subnet mask for the host address? What is the network address? of this host network, what is the broadcast address of this host network, what is the valid range of hosts on this host network, what is the maximum number of hosts on any one segment, and how many networks exist in this scheme. So taking our 128 block, we're going to find these answers. Again, we know that we're already in a class C address. So all we have to worry about and work with is the last block. So if I'm given the address of 192.168.2.37 with a 27-bit mask, the first question I have to answer is what class am I in? I know that since 192 is in the first octet, I'm in a class C address. That means that my classful boundary is between the third and the fourth octet. I can't do anything with the first three octets in terms of subnetting. I can only work with the last octet. So when I use my 128 block, I automatically know that I'm working in the last octet. The second question was, how do I find my subnet mask? If my first three octets are the first 24 bits, 8 in the first, plus another 8 in the second, plus another 8 in the third, equals 24, then in my last octet, I just have to count in three more bits, 1, 2, and 3. Using the same addition function that we did earlier, I now know that 27 bits, a slash 27 mask, gives me a subnet mask of 255.255.255.224. Our third question was how do we find the network address for this host? If we take our 128 block, and we place our new boundary determined by our mask. We now see the new block number that can be used to determine the order of our networks. It will always be just to the left of the boundary set by the new mask. In this case, the block that we need to use is 32. Our networks will start at 192.168.2.0. Our second one begins with 
192.168.2.32. The third network is 192.168.2.64, followed by 192.168.2.96. The fifth network begins at 192.168.2.128. As you can see, we're increasing the value of each network by our block size of 32. This would continue until we reached 192.168.2.224. If we were to add 32 to 224, that would give us 192.168.2.255. Adding something beyond 32 would roll us over into a new network, which would be 192.168.3.0. So adding up all the network addresses, you can now see that there are a total of eight networks within the address scheme of 192.168.2.x with a mask of .224. Remember, we borrowed three bits in the last octet, and you can verify 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. That means that we have a remaining 5 bits, which gives us our maximum number of hosts. 2 to the power of 5 equals 32, but we have to subtract 2 from 32 because one of the addresses will be used for the network line, the other address will be used as the broadcast address. So if we return to our original address of 192.168.2.37, we see that .37 falls within the block of 192.168.2.32. That means that 192.168.2.32 is the network address for this host. The broadcast address for the .37 host would be 192.168.2.63 because our next network begins at 192.168.2.64. The valid range of host for this network is 192.168.2.33 up to 192.168. Dot 168 dot 2 62 the network address sits at dot 32 and the broadcast address sits at dot 63 and as we said before the maximum number of hosts for this segment is 30 2 to the power of 5 because we had 5 bits remaining is 32 but we had to take away one address for the network line and one address for the broadcast. The total number of networks in this scheme is 8. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, beginning at 192.168.2.0, then 2.32, 2.64, and so on. Thank you for watching this tutorial on VLSM. To find out more about our programs or college, please visit us online at www.harrison.edu.